Okay guys, in this video we're going to talk about everything we know about the third episode of Season 8, the battle for Winterfell, supported with trailers, teasers, previews and a few leaked photos. At the end of episode 2, the army of the dead arrives at Winterfell. The living is as ready as they can be for the battle against the Night King's army. They made as much weapons out of Dragonglass as they could, and pretty much all defenses are made out of Dragonglass as well, from anti-cavalry to anti-climbing defenses on the walls. Main portion of the living armies are outside Venerfell, from the Dutraki to the Unsullied and the Knights of the Vale, with Brienne, Podrick and Jorah waiting for the Night King's army to attack. We already knew that the big battle for Venerfell is set to take place in Season 8, and it's been confirmed to take place in the third episode of the final season, by an actor who plays the Night King, Vladimir Ferdic. Even though Winterfell was not the first castle to get destroyed on his way south, the Night King finally arrived, and the next thing we'll see is an epic battle for Winterfell. Ferdic let the news slip during a fan convention in Hungary. He said and spoiled in the third episode of the last season, there's a battle that creators intended to be a historic moment in television. Almost the full episode will be about a battle, it'll take about one hour. Ferdic states they filmed this battle for three months in the wind and rain outdoors and then for another month in a huge studio, which makes this far in the way the most labor-intensive battle sequence in the show's history, and therefore in the history of TV. Entertainment Weekly's cover story from a few months back gave us an inside look into the final Game of Thrones season through the eyes of James Hibbard. It's shaping up to be what probably almost certainly is the longest consecutive battle sequence in cinema history. To film the Battle of Winterfell, HBO built an enormous green screen in order to bring their vision of an epic battle to life. So who was gathered there for this week's long shoot? First we got the Unsullied, and the Unsullied are not the only people from Essos who are part of the Battle of Winterfell, they are also the Trekkie Riders. The Unsullied form Phalanx Formation, their famous battle tactic, a large group of them fighting in lockstep phalanxes using Spear and Shield, which has Dragonglass on it as well. As we all know, Dragonglass, also known as Obsidian, is the key to killing the Night King's army, as along with Valyrian Steel it's one of the two known substances capable of killing both, White Walkers and their Whites. The living will use Jungles in pretty much every way possible. With this formation, they once defeated an army that was approximately 7 times bigger in numbers. Let's hope they are still as good. Here above the Unsullied in top left corner you can see two dragons in the sky. It's Rhaegal and Drogon, and on them are Jon and Danny. They will fly out to the near hill to overlook the battlements and wait for the Night King to come for Bran. Bran is the Night King's target, and as we learned from the War Council meeting, the plan is to wait for the Night King to show up at the Godswood. Theon will be protecting Bran, and from the preview we can tell there will be a lot of action going on. Bran's line from the trailer, everything you did brought you where you are now, where you belong home, is probably the Theon before the battle takes place. Even Jon at some point will fight in the Godswood later on. The Dutraki and the Unsullied will be in the middle, while the Northerners and the Knights of the Vale will be protecting flanks. Bran is commanding left flank, beside her Jaime and combined forces of the Knights of the Vale and Northerners. How do I know they are on the left flank? We know it from the War Council meeting that the combined forces of the Northerners and the Knights of the Vale are protecting left flank. And also there's a bunch of trebuchets. Davos will be on the walls of Winterfell, signalizing others when this is the right time to light the trench, and he'll probably take command of the archers on the walls as well. From leaked photos we know that multiple people will wield flaming swords in the battle against the dead. Out of all the characters we know, Beric Nodarion is one of the most closely associated with the flaming sword, and he is the one we see wielding it in the trailer. Seems like Nodarion shared a trick with a few people. Next to Beric we see the Hound in the midst of a battle for Winterfell against White Walkers. Beric is ready, but the Hound is terrified and in fear of all the fire around him. Winterfell is on fire, there are flaming swords around him and probably flaming arrows flying all around. However, I also think this is going to be a moment the Hound will finally defeat his fear of fire and actually be of some help for the Sarks. The good news about this battle is that we'll finally see much more of Darwals. That's right, not only Ghost but probably of Nymeria as well. Ghost will have a fair amount of screen time and will most definitely fight at this battle. Or you'll see him again, Bauer told the Huffington Post. He has a fair amount of screen time in Season 8, he does show up. As a matter of fact, I think we already saw Ghost in the official trailer, although many people disagree that it's actually him in the background. Anyways, the Night King is coming, but Winterfell and the Living will be ready. Winterfell now has a dug trench all around it, and everyone wields dragonless weapons and shields. The battle for Winterfell will without a doubt be the greatest battle sequence in the television history. This battle is directed by Miguel Sapoknik, the guy behind some of the best episodes of Game of Thrones, like Hard Home, Vince of Winter and Battle of the Bastards. Talking about this huge battle for Winterfell, it's brutal, said star Peter Dinklage during Lannister. It makes the Battle of the Bastards look like a theme park. 
Writing earlier about this historic sequence, James Hibbert called it wall-to-wall -wall action and detailed how it jumps between the stories of several different characters. Everyone wants to know what happens, who wins, who dies. And right off the bat, I have to bring you the bad news. Everything we have from teasers to leaked photos point to massive defeat for the living. Winter will not fall at Winterfell. This was teased by Winterfell teaser, in which we see Stark's ancestral home in ruins and abandoned with the Night King entering through its gates. This battle will be a huge defeat for the living. From leaked photos, we can tell Winterfell is on fire, the Night King has won. There's a possibility that the Night King uses some kind of magic, or even his undead dragon Viserion to burn down Winterfell, but I actually think it's the living who burns it down, either on purpose or it catches on fire by itself, from all the fire they use to kill whites. If it's on purpose, then I can definitely see Jon using Rhaegal to burn down Winterfell, after they're forced to retreat. Why would Jon burn down his home? Well, if they lost, it means there's tens of thousands corpses laying inside and outside Winterfell. You know what happens to those who died. They become part of the Night King's armies, and the Living cannot allow those numbers to get any higher. So after they lose most of their armies, the Living will probably make a decision to retreat and run, and they are going to have to burn Winterfell to make sure the army of the dead doesn't grow. This was foreshadowed by Ed when he told to Jon and Sam less men left, burn the rest of us. I believe the crypts of Winterfell will play a huge role during this fight, and it's going to help either the living or the dead tremendously. In case you don't know, there are hidden passageways built so the lords of Winterfell could escape in emergency, and Maester Luin actually offered Theon to use it to escape Winterfell and join the Night's Watch when Ramsay came. If the living are the ones who will use it, then they will use it to escape after defeat, but if it's the Night King who uses it, then he will use it to attack Winterfell from inside, while at the same time attacking from outside. If the Night King uses it, then it would also confirm a popular theory of him being a Stark, because remember, those hidden passages were built for the Stark Lords, and if he was a Stark, then he knows about his secret passage. I believe we have already seen this hidden passage in the Crypts of Winterfell teaser for Season 8, where Arya is passing through some tunnel, and I believe the Night King will use it to attack Winterfell from the inside. In Episode 2, it was mentioned way too many times how the crypts are the safest place to be. Gendry said it to Arya, Gilly said it to those ladies, it was mentioned on the War Council multiple times, Jon said it to Sam, Jorah said it to Lyanna, they're totally not going to be safe down there. Some theorize the Night King will raise the dead in the crypts, but I believe the Night King will actually come from the crypts. As you might expect, this battle will leave many dead. Check out this image of lifeless bodies thrown across the ground outside of Winterfell's set at Moneyglass. We can see what looks like a field strewn with bodies to the left of the castle, including some that look like horses. As with Moneyglass, the ground at Megramorn Quarry was littered with bodies. Unlike at Moneyglass, someone was able to get up close and personal with the bodies. There are all kinds of corpses at Megramorn Quarry, from Ironborns to Whites. In this teased the Mist Frost the Direwolf Mark Rover, as well as the Marker for Denny's Unsullied Forces, but unfortunately the Northern Army and the Unsullied are not going to be the only casualties for the living. It's confirmed that most of the Trekkie will fall as well, and then shortly after be brought back to life by the White Walkers to act as their minions. Here you can see the Trekkie Whites riding on horseback. After this epic battle of Winterfell, the Night King will conquer the North, and the living or at least what's left of them will have to retreat south and we know where exactly. One of the teasers provided this shot of Danny standing in front of a fireplace, with her back turned to Jon, and the details on that fireplace confirm they are at Dragonstone. Take a look at all the details on this shot, from the fireplace itself to its props, to stone curves and the metalwork. It's the very same thing we already saw at Dragonstone, so now we know they will retreat at Dragonstone in Episode 4 after Winterfell falls to the Night King in Episode 3. Anyways, we'll talk more about it in the upcoming videos. There's plenty of battle stuff we got from all the promotional material for Season 8 Episode 3. Verdict said, and at the same time spoiled another stare down between Jon Snow and the Night King, that is set to take place in Season 8. Perhaps this time it will be more personal. Maybe this time it's not just some wildlings the Night King raises from dead, but it's actually his own family members from the crypts, like for example recently deceased Rickon Stark. From the official trailer, we can tell for sure that Arya and Jon will be fighting fiercely for their home, and something likely the dead Starks resurrected by the Night King from the crypts will chase Arya through the holes of Winterfell. But let's get a bit back and see how could have Arya got herself in this situation. So what happens is that Jaime probably see a bunch of whites breaching the crypts of Winterfell, or the godswood of Winterfell, wherever Bran is at that moment. Jaime sees it and so he shouts Bran to someone likely to Arya, as a warning that her brother's life is in danger. Then Jamie and Arya probably run to defend Bran. So Jamie and Arya go for Bran who is probably accompanied by Sam, and this right here might be Arya, and behind her Jamie and Sam pushing Bran, as they all run from something. 
Says Jamie and Sam, her pushing brain in his wheelchair will not be as quick as Arya, she will try and distract that something from them, running the other way and that way saving brain. And this is a clip of her doing it, and here we can actually see what's chasing her. In this light end version, if you look closely, you can notice that she looks to be pursued by something with a skeletal face. Judging by the scared look of Arya, I have the feeling that she's running from something that came from inside the crypts, the dead Starks. Keep in mind that Arya does not fear death, she'd stand and fight anyone or anything. Arya would not be afraid of whites or white walkers, as she's actually fighting those in the trailer. She would not run from them, especially since she's holding a knife made out of dragonglass, which kills them. I think the one chasing her, or at least one among them, is her brother Rickon, who died at the Battle of the Bastards and was buried in the crypts below Winterfell. Arya sees undead Rickon, she cries and is not able to fight him, so she runs. All I hope and expect to see in this battle for Winterfell is Jon and Arya fight alongside their direwolves ghost in Nymeria, and the direwolves don't actually end up sacrificing themselves for their masters, although they most likely will. As I said earlier, Ghost is already confirmed to fight in this battle, but his sister Nymeria is as likely to reappear and fight as well. Nymeria will probably also reappear with her pack of wolves during this battle, joining the fight for Winterfell and help her brother Ghost and Arya defend it. Arya's Darwall briefly showed up in Season 7, but in my opinion Nymeria's cameo was just setting the stage for something bigger, much, much bigger. In the book's author George R. R. Martin keeps the missing Nymeria and her wolf pack very much on the minds of readers via Arya's dreams, and the news of a vast pack led by Nymeria attacking Stark enemies deep in Frey territory. In a 2014 interview with Mashable, Martin teased Nymeria's important role in the final two books. You know, I don't like to give things away, he told with a grin. But Martin added, you don't hang a giant wolf pack on the wall unless you intend to use it. That pretty much says it all by itself. Nymeria and her pack of wolves will appear in the darkest hour, arrive out of nowhere to try to turn the tide. Wouldn't it be nice if Ghost also got to fight by his wolf sister's side, just as Jan will fight alongside Arya? Jenny's song sung by Podrick in episode 2 was farewell to so many characters. Who will die in this battle? Well, many will die, but out of the main characters, probably Podrick because he's got too much screen time in episode, Jorah Mormont, a few Northern Lords, probably Ed and Beric as well, and possibly Theon Greyjoy while trying to save some of the Starks. Theon's whole story seems to be going this way, and it does seem like something he'd do for his Stark siblings. Theon will most likely die in this episode. He saved his sister, he came back to Winterfell to defend his home and the Starks, he fully redeemed himself. We know from teasers that Jon and Arya will definitely not die, as we see Jon with Danny at Dragonstone where they will retreat after this defeat, and Maisie Williams teased this about her character, which confirms she is not going to die. Maisie said this about Arya. There's this split with Arya between trying to be who she wants to be, getting back to back to that naivete and innocence with her family, and her unfinished business. What this means is that Arya will stick with her family and fight for Winterfell against the Night King in episode 3, but when Winterfell falls and when Arya learns of Cersei's yet another betrayal over her family, she'll have to say a temporary goodbye to her family and go to finish her infamous list. Arya will go on her mission and she will likely be accompanied by the Hound. There's a high possibility that Arya will travel to King's Landing to put an end to Cersei, or at least to try. As the fighter starts, I don't think Sansa or Bran will die. Jaime and Arya will save Bran, and all three will likely survive. Someone might sacrifice his or hers life to save Sansa, with the most likely candidates being Theon and Brienne. Long story short, Arya and Jon are confirmed not to die, but it's also safe to say that none of the Starks are going to die in this battle for their home. Episode 3 will end exactly how we expect, with the living retreating south. Ok guys, that will be everything we know about the Season 8 Episode 3, supported with all the trailers, teasers, previews and a few spoilers. How do you like the third episode of the final season, which is probably going to be the best episode in Game of Thrones? And what do you think will also take place? Please make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.